reality that you may have delays uh, and that you may uh, be prudent to take uh, provisions with you. Um, the issues of supply and resupply are critical uh, and we've seen, uh, we've seen instances where there are large uh, amounts of vehicles gathered that they, they can deplete very, very important supplies in small towns quickly and really we're just appealing to people's common sense to, uh, to think about their, the impact of their activities and behaviours on, on communities that uh, really require uh, the broader community support. Uh, they're really the main issues from a QPS perspective. Uh, as I said, we, we see this event uh, uh, being sustained for in excess of a week, uh, more likely two to three weeks, if you factor in uh, recovery and resupply. So, uh, with your agreement, we'll open to questions. Bruce, you've been appointed to a new role. Can you describe what that will entail? And, and have you actually been able to start anything yet, considering <laughs> it's still uh, underway as we speak? Yeah, look, uh, the appointment to the role of uh, State Recovery Coordinator is uh, clearly an important one uh, and one that we all take very, very seriously. Um, the role of uh, well, recovery starts almost as soon as response does as uh, we have to start thinking about getting communities uh, back on foot. With an event of this scale, um, I think the, the job that I have, um, if we attempt to manage this uh, centrally, the task is simply too big for any one organisation or one group to manage. So my job is to try and break that down into, into manageable chunks. Uh, and the way we will do that is uh, by working very, very closely with local government. Uh, local government are on the ground, they understand their communities, they understand the key drivers in those. So uh, we'll be working with local government to establish uh, local recovery groups uh, where they can look at the key areas of economic recovery, of infrastructure recovery, of the human and social uh, impacts of, uh, of these events on their communities and also if there are any environmental um, impacts that, uh, that, has been, that have been caused. Um, the job that I guess I have is to pull, pull together the, uh, the resources of the state government and to start to look across all of those recovery groups and to establish whether there are patterns or issues that we need to be looking at from a whole of government perspective. Um, so if we need to be tweaking some policies or making some amendments to the way that, uh, that government interacts with the community to ensure that that community can get back on track uh, at the earliest possible time, um, that will be my job. I guess I've been handed a, a big set of keys uh, and I'll be using those keys to open the door of various government agencies um, to get the support that those locals will need to, uh, to recover from this very, very significant event. Speaking on that, um, the recovery money that's already been mentioned, the $1 million from the state and the $1 million from the federal, is that anywhere near enough? Ah, well, that, uh, that, that's been uh, opened by the Premier. Um, uh, more people will be making donations, I'm sure, and businesses uh, to that group, uh, to that uh, fund, uh, and that will be handed to the Red Cross, and the Red Cross will make the determination about where the most need is uh, for that fund. They're very experienced at this. They have done this before. Uh, they understand, and what they will do is, uh, is prioritise areas of greatest need. Let's talk a little bit more about food. I know you mentioned with Rockhampton the two supermarkets are going under. So where are about to the food coming from and is there enough? Yep, uh, it, that's a very good question. Um, food uh, supply generally uh, is of growing concern. Uh, this morning uh, I've had a uh, telephone hookup with the Retail Association uh, where all the major supermarkets and the independents have come together. Uh, like us, their focus uh, at the moment is on supporting communities. Um, so they've come together and, and we're talking with them about opening up uh, different um, supply chains to be able to move food uh, to the north uh, and then use that as a point of uh, distribution into inland. Uh, we might have to look at some, uh, some creative ways of doing that. We may have to look at moving uh, product by sea, um, by plane. So there's a whole range of, uh, of planning that's currently going on. We'll be getting back together uh, this afternoon uh, to continue with that planning. I have to say that the cooperation uh, and the commitment that's been shown uh, by, the, uh, by the industry has been, uh, has been fantastic. So those towns that are cut off at the moment, so or, or are going to be cut off, you could be looking at choppering food in at 
interesting to say if you need people to be donating food as well? Uh, look, we, we would uh, not encourage people to donate food. Um, what happens is it creates an enormous logistical exercise to start moving things around. So food, clothing, I mean, people are extraordinarily well-meaning and extraordinarily generous. Um, but the, the, thing, the best thing to donate is cash, and that cash can then go into the fund and find its way to those in most need. How bad is the risk of waterborne disease? Uh, look, it is significant. Um, one of the other things that we'll be doing today is talking to local councils and uh, determining whether we need to provide additional expertise um, through state government resources to assist councils uh, in, uh, in both assessing and rectifying damage that may have occurred to, uh, to water purification and or their sewerage systems. Um, so that, that offer is there. Um, and if we do need to bring in bottled water, if we do need to bring in water purification, all of those things can, uh, can form part of the response. Do you know how many regions there are that currently are facing a crisis with water supply? Uh, at the moment, Dalby is, uh, has a, a direct um, issue and Gainda has lost some, uh, some pumps. Um, so we'll be talking uh, with, uh, with those councils today. Um, I've had no other reports of significant issues, um, but we will continue to liaise with councils around that. Are we getting a better indication yet of what the damage bill is going to be in the state? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, the water hasn't gone down. We can't inspect roads. Uh, and the focus at the moment is on public safety and ensuring that communities um, are safe and supported. Um, yeah, I think yeah, the counting of the, uh, the bill will be something that will be, come, be over the coming weeks. The Acting Premier said that it would be you know, more than a billion dollars. It will be much more than that, won't it? Uh, look, I would anticipate. I don't want to put a number on it, but yeah, a, an event of this scale has to cause, cause enormous damage. Is this the biggest event that Queensland's ever seen? Or not? Uh, look, it's certainly up there. I, you know, different events, uh, they all have a different nature and affect you know, people in different ways. Cyclones obviously do lots of uh, damage to houses and so on. Um, you know, floods are a bit more insidious and uh, we find enormous damage to roads and, uh, and that sort of infrastructure. So, you know, it's, it's a very big event. Is this the biggest challenge for EMQ? So far? It's certainly a big challenge, uh, as they all are, but uh, our people, along with all the others, volunteers, police, fireys, uh, you know, a whole range of people, uh, you know, Department of Communities have all come together. The response has been magnificent. What are fatigue levels like for emergency service workers? It's nearly been a week now and there hasn't been a letter. Uh, look, we're very conscious of fatigue. Uh, people work best when they're fresh and focused. Um, so fatigue management is something that we look very, very closely at. Um, all of those agencies have appropriate fatigue management in. We put people in on shifts and we, we rotate people through. Um, so I've got no concerns at this stage. Uh, people are holding up well um, and I expect that they will continue to do so. Highway might open up south of Gingin, like those thousand odd people stuck in the yeah. ground. <laughs> Please? Yeah, um, look, I don't know. Um, the, you know. Specific questions of that nature, we can we could get back to you, but I, you know, I don't have any detailed information. Be as long as two days. Right? Look, I, I would hope not, but um, I don't know, Brett. Do you have any? Yes, some. It, it's one of those, uh, as Bruce often says, it's a moving feast, and uh, waters and the upper catchments often affect. Uh, level, so they go up and down. For example, Theodore, uh, we're seeing uh, uh, the river, the Dawson River at Theodore coming off the peak, but it's going to move up over the next two days back to its high because of additional waters coming down uh, the catchment. Um, uh, we're also very, very interested in Gin Gin. It is one of the main supply routes, uh, and uh, uh, I think the best advice is just to follow 19, uh, 13, 1940. Uh, as soon as it's open, it'll be posted, and we'll also alert the media as soon as it's uh, uh, open because there's a critical uh, issue for people moving um, north to south uh, in Queensland. Would there be any advice sort of not to go straight away so that you're not in traffic for miles or anything like that? Uh, very, very important message uh, to get out to people to factor road closures uh, and road interruptions into their travel. Uh, thankfully, we have um, the Cunningham's Gap has been closed for a number of days. Uh, one lane's open now and uh, engineers and others have done a marvellous job there in getting that key route uh, reopened. Uh, but we really, the, there is so many uh, road closures that we're really relying on people to uh, take control of their own travel and make those uh, checks before they uh, commence journeys. Um, Bruce, was the um, 9.4 expected at um, uh, Rockhampton? Um, you haven't, you, when do you think you'll know how many homes will be inundated? 
Yeah, look, um, it's a question for local government. Uh, they're currently doing that modelling. They, as I say, they've done that modelling for a nine metre peak. Um, they will rerun those numbers for a 9.4. Um, and then they will get information to uh, to the households that are, will be affected by that. And, but do you think, um, we just with the lack of 40 centimetre rise, would, mm. could it be possible that the um, damage would be um, significant? Uh, look, I think yeah, a, a difference of yeah, 400 mils is, is, is significant. Uh, yeah, it can mean the difference between water into your yard and water over the floorboards where you know, real damage and... Uh, and um, you know, uh, discomfort for people starts because coming back into your house after that, you need electrical, you know, electricians to check, you know, all of those things, plus pulling up carpets and uh, and so on. So, yeah, that that sort of rise is very significant. Um, Bruce, what are the regions worst affected by this food issue that you were talking about before? Uh, look, right through, we, this resupply will occur in the Downs area, up, right up into central Queensland, uh, across to the coast. Um, yeah, the, the, those smaller communities are no less important. They are a very, very keen focus um, for us. I know they probably don't get mentioned um, as often as some of the bigger towns and so on, but I can assure everyone that uh, as far as the emergency response uh, is concerned, the isolated uh, farmhouse, the very small community is just as much a focus uh, for emergency services uh, and we'll again be working with local government. They have their lists of people who do get uh, get uh, isolated in, uh, in, in farms and properties uh, as well as those small communities and uh, we'll be working to resupply each of them. Look, it's it's pretty much staples. Um, so yeah, you know, essentials. It might be canned food, um, you know, milk, um, and you know, then things around personal hygiene um, and uh, and any medications uh, that might be needed. So yeah, it's yeah, you know, it's the essentials to keep that community. Uh, bread, long life milk. Yeah, bread, long life milk, rice, that sort of thing. So uh, and and tinned foods. Um, yeah, fresh fruit and, and vegetables. Obviously, getting uh, you know, fresh fruits uh, is important. How critical was it that you got moving on this this afternoon with the retailers? Sorry. Uh, How critical was it that you got moving on this this afternoon with the retailers? Oh, look, I think it's very critical. Um, you know, some of those bigger centres, uh, which require significant you know, volumes of, uh, of food to, uh, and groceries to move, um, may well have become a significant problem. Uh, and then moving things in by air um, is much, much slower and obviously much more expensive. Um, so getting you know, some early runs on the board with the planning uh, will enable us to respond before it becomes a critical issue. Uh, look, I would hope that we will have the preliminary pl planning uh, finished this evening or early tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, part of that planning is can we access all the things we need, containers, boats, etc. Um, so I would anticipate we'll be uh, in a position to move relatively soon after uh, that planning's completed. And that food supply that's looking at thousands of people then across the state hmm. who need that food. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, with the with the highways and so on uh, cut at uh, at Jin Jin, you know, north of Bundaberg is uh, can't be accessed from uh, from the major distribution centres, and then so many roads are closed um, to the west that we can't come in from yeah from the west. So um, we need to find a way to resupply those major centres all the way up to Cairns. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it would appear at this stage that doing that by by sea um, is the best, and, unless we can get those uh, highways open. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Russ. Thanks for your patience today, too. Bruce, just a dumb question. Um, when you say 15 metres, 9 metres, 8 metres, what exactly is that about? Mm. Sorry? What, when you say 8 and 9 metres, what is that about? 